Hi, friend. Welcome to this first of the five element series. There isn't really like an order to these, so you can do them whichever order you like, but I decided to start with the earth. Um, in traditional medicine, things don't move in a straight line like we like to do when we're thinking in our minds. Things move in cycles and spirals, so the elements don't really have an order, but I felt like starting with earth, so this is the first one. The earth element is connected to your stomach and your spleen. So these are the two um, energies or the two organs that we're going to be working with in today's class. If there was three words to describe the earth element, it would be nurturing, center, and personal presence. So these are the qualities that we want to embody after and throughout this practice. So we're actually going to start today um, laying on the floor, but before you get too comfortable, I just want to make sure that you have the little props that we need today. We're not going to need that many, but I'm sitting on a bolster. So if you have a bolster, one, and then a second one, that would be really good. If you don't have bolsters, then two denser pillows, or if you don't have dense pillows, then get like four soft ones. Um, and a blanket, a blanket will be good to have as well. So as you get your things, you might wanna pause the video and then come back when you've got your bolsters, your pillows and your blanket ready. So once you have your uh, bolsters and your pillows, you're going to lay down and I would like you to have a little bit of support around you. So if you bring your bolster or your pillows just under your back so that you can lay down and then see if you stretch your legs to straight, open your hands, take a few deep centering breaths here. And as you breathe, Close your eyes, relax into the floor. And then you can use your imagination and allow yourself to feel that through the floor, you're really resting into the earth. And you're gonna stay here for about five minutes. So allow yourself to rest down and relax. And as you breathe in, breathe in with your stomach. Let your stomach be soft. And when you breathe in, fill it up like it was a balloon. Fill it up all the way. Big, deep breath. As you exhale, you can exhale through your mouth if you like. Feel your stomach slowly contracting as you push your breath out. As you inhale, fill up all the way down. And if you want to, you can see if you can breathe all the way down until your hips feel like they're expanding a little bit with your inhale. And as you exhale, allow your breath to gently find its way back up and out of your mouth. Relax your mouth. Relax your jaw. Relax your tongue. Feel that in this moment and for the rest of this hour, you're able to completely relax. You are supported by the bolster, by your pillow, by the floor, by the earth. You are provided for in every moment by this earth, by this playground that we get to live our lives on. And start to allow your energy to get grounded and connect your energy with the energy of our Mother Earth. And part of this journey of connecting to the Earth is to become comfortable with duality and not run from it. And what I mean by that is to allow yourself to accept your darkness as much as you accept your light. allow yourself to be whole 
bringing their light to your shadow in this moment. Just like the earth stays spinning around the sun. Sometimes we have daylight, sometimes it's nighttime. Both are equally important for all of Earth's creatures, including you, to grow. See so if you relax your neck, start to relax into your shoulders and down both your arms. Relax your hands and your fingers. Feel both your arms heavy and relaxed here. Relax your spine. Relax your mind. Relax every little part of your body. Relax your buttocks and then relax both your legs, your thighs, your knees. Relax your calves and down your shins and then relax into your ankles and your feet and into all ten toes. And then start to bring your attention to your stomach. The stomach is actually the fourth part of the digestive tube. The stomach is what stores the most recently eaten food and then brings it down to the duodenum. If we have troubles with indigestion or difficulty to digest, it happens in the stomach. So if you've had any things, whether they were food particles or energetic particles or emotions, that have been difficult for you to digest recently, this is the perfect time to take time to do that. The first function of your stomach is to be a recipient. So the stomach is a representation of our capacity to be hospitable towards other people. To receive is a passive and surrendering action. So in this way, the stomach is a very yin organ. The second function of your stomach is more masculine, more yang, is to produce acids that then attack, corrode, and decompose the food that we've eaten. So the stomach digests our feelings and our emotions. We're going to work on the meridians of the stomach and the gallbladder today. So the stomach and the gallbladder are the pair of organs for this earth element. So we're going to start just opening the meridian of the stomach. So if you, without getting up too much, lift your knees off the floor, bend your knees and then take your second pillow or bolster and just slide it in underneath your legs. Open your knees out to the sides and make sure you have enough support under your knees because we're gonna be here for a little while. So feet towards each other. This is called a butterfly pose in yoga. And we're gonna open the inner lines, the energetic lines that connect to the groin. If you want to here, it might be nice to place one hand just on your stomach and then the other hand on your heart. And I don't know if you've heard this saying, you probably have that we have three minds in our body. We have our brain, we have our heart, and we have the stomach. And as I mentioned, the stomach deals with processing emotions. So we're gonna open these energy channels that go on the insides of the legs now and just allow them to flow a little bit more. So if you bring your attention to the inner groins, the inner thighs. And then just allow your attention to focus here on relaxing and releasing any tension. So bring your attention to your attention 
where attention goes, energy flows. We're going to stay here for about five minutes as well. So just stay with your breath. Make sure you breathe into your stomach. Fill your belly up. If we have issues in the stomach, they will represent a difficulty to allow ourselves to experience feelings and emotions first. And then secondly, a difficulty in digesting our feelings and emotions. So sensitive stomachs are really people with a sensitivity to emotions and feelings. In the stomach is where we have conflict of not being able to digest what happened, whether it's real or virtual. When an emotional conflict is very active, the stomach will need more gastric fluid to digest better. This means that we start mulling over what someone did to us. Something like, I can't even digest <laughs> that you did this to me. Somebody with a weak stomach doesn't like confrontations. This is a stomach that prefers baby food or food that's very mm, bland <laughs> and emotional blandness is preferred. Maybe this person doesn't feel able to deal with strong emotions like anger. And so we turn it outward. The very word emotion comes from the Latin ex movere, which literally means to move out. So somebody with a weak stomach or issues in the stomach feel forced to swallow these emotions, your temper or your rage. This means we literally swallow bile and the stomach acids move up to the heart. So we call this heartburn or dyspepsia. Because to digest all of these energies, the stomach has to produce more gastric acid. And actually this gastric acid <clears throat> secretion is directly associated to the mind. The kind of emotions that the stomach finds difficult to digest are associated with material problems. So this is where this earth energy comes in. Professional problems, money issues, issues, legal and educational matters. Stomach problems are very much the problems that bring us down to earth to do with our roots and our essence, our work, our home, our mother the place where we live and money. When we burp, we release air, which is tension in the stomach and it gives us release and relief. If we have ulcers in the stomach, they are also associated to our roots, but exclusively with the relationship aspect to our partner, to our immediate family and to our home. If we find it difficult to get along with the people we live with and we feel it difficult to digest the tension we feel with the person we live with, or we continue to live with that person, maybe because our beliefs don't allow us to leave or maybe we don't have the material possibility or maturity to leave the environment and we're constantly forced to face that person, we can develop ulcers as a result. In the beginning, when the tension is really active, we feel a pain in the stomach, and then later on, we bleed. If we have stomach ulcers, it's because we start creating aggression towards ourselves because we're afraid to confront others. So literally, your body is always talking to you. Very slowly, see if you lift your legs a little bit higher so you can pull your bolster out from underneath your knees. 
and then allow yourself to rest back down into Shavasana again. So straight legs. You can open your arms so that you can really relax your shoulders down the sides. You can imagine your shoulders as two lumps of vegan butter and just let them melt down towards the floor over your support. If it is possible for you at all to slow your breath down even more, I invite you to do that now. Breathe even slower, even deeper. Invite more air in to really fill you up. And exhale even slower all the way out. Just digesting a little bit how you feel. And see if for this class and for the rest of the time that we spend together now, you can allow yourself to truly feel what you are feeling in this moment. Accept every feeling as a part of you, every emotion as energy in motion. We're going to stay here for about another minute. So see if again you just tune in with yourself and check that your face, your tongue, your jaw, your mouth are relaxed. That your arms and your legs feel nice and soft. That everything is soft and gooey connected through the center channel with your three minds, your brain, your heart, and your stomach. We got two more big, slow breaths here. Let yourself breathe slow and deep all the way in. all the way out and then again start to bend your knees put your feet flat and then roll over onto your right side let's take two three breaths just collecting our energy on our right side and then slowly make your way up we're going to do a slightly more intense pose now called dragon's pose we're going to start with our right leg. So if you bring your hands down to the floor, bring your knees back, and then take your right foot and step it forward next to your right hand. We're going to walk the left knee back as far as possible. If this hurts your knee, you can always take your yoga mat and double it and give yourself a little bit more support. If it still hurts, then you know what? Just take your pillow or your blanket and just put that underneath your knees so that you can be nice and relaxed here. And then really let your hips weigh down. For some people, this is going to be enough. And we're going to stay here for a couple of minutes. So it's not one of those poses where you really want to force yourself or push too much. You want to be able to hold. If this is okay and you think you can go further, then come into full dragon with me. Come down onto your elbows. So now we're working on the gallbladder meridian. Sorry, I meant the spleen. I meant the spleen. That's what I wanted to say. So the spleen and the pancreas are part of the earth element. The root of the word spleen means dark, like a dark brown. And the name spleen is because the organ itself is dark brown. And just like the pancreas, the spleen is a busy, hardworking organ. It regulates the blood as a team with the pancreas. It's a lymphatic organ which filters the blood and works together also with the liver in the production of bile and producing white blood cells. In this way, it helps us with our immune system. The pancreas, which is the cousin of the spleen, is a much more yang organ, more masculine, more intense, whereas the spleen is more yin, more feminine. The spleen actually regulates a woman's menstrual cycles 
and contributes towards the good functioning of our female genital organs. So spleen cancer actually occurs more often in women than in men, although men sometimes also suffer from spleen cancer. Spleen cancer is a more feminine cancer, whereas pancreas cancer is more of a male masculine cancer. When we have problems in our spleen, they indicate that we suffer because we don't allow ourselves enough time for fun and pleasure. This means that we put too much value on our duties and our profession, and we lack joy in our life. We literally like delete ourselves as important, and our attitude towards life becomes too yin, too feminine, too passive. People with spleen issues will hang on to the past, cultivating the past, not being able to deal with the present. These energies create too much regulations, too many norms, too much rigidity. We become obsessed about what we need to do because we're afraid that we don't matter. The spleen helps us create self-esteem and when our spleen energy is low, we find it difficult to celebrate ourselves and our life. We're gonna stay here for another five breaths. If it's possible for you to relax down even more, drop your hips even more, see if you can do that. see if you come up on your hands if you're not on your hands already and then very slowly bring your right foot back you can move the bolster out of the way or unfold your mat and then we're going to come to sitting on our toes while well, sitting on our heels and just see if you bring your fingers down to your toes and just check that your toes have a little bit of space between them that you're not doubling your toes or crossing your toes in any way just make sure that they're Nice and spread. So a lot of the nerves from your stomach actually go into your buttocks. So if you roll over your heels a little bit, massaging your feet, which obviously your feet connect quite strongly to the earth element, but also massaging your buttocks will help relieve any tension in your stomach. I'm just going to be here for two, three breaths more. And then see if you come back onto all fours. Bring your hands over towards the right side of your mat. Step your knees back a little bit further. And then bring your left foot forward next to your left hand. So you know already what to do to support your knee here on the back. If you need to fold your mat, if you need to put your pillow or your bolster underneath your knee, then do that. And if this is enough, you need to be the, you need to make your own decisions here. If this is enough, stay here. Or if you want to come all the way down to dragon and come down to your elbows and then stay here and just deal with, deal with these sensations. So as we're working on these spleen meridians, take a little moment to connect with your feminine energy and how much you live out your femininity and celebrate life, how much you color outside of the box. If you enjoy celebrations and parties, getting together with friends, talking about feelings, doing these more feminine acts and actions of connecting both with yourself and with other people, which is a very feminine energy. Check in with your jaw, make sure your tongue is nice and relaxed, that your breathing is nice and soft.
And so, just allowing yourself, if you can, sink down a little bit more. Just contemplating play as an important part of being alive, even though as adults we tend to not do that so much. When was the last time you played and do you want to play more? Maybe it's nice to relax your head here, relax your neck. We're going to stay here for about 10 more breaths. So really allow yourself to breathe it all in. Breathe it all out. Don't come out until we're done. See if you can just be with yourself and be a little bit uncomfortable. If you have any sharp shooting pains, that's not cool. But if it's just that kind of sensation of like, oh, deal with it. Get over yourself, princess. This is stuff that needs to move. This is tension that you're holding all the time. Now we're putting the body into positions where you can feel it. You gotta feel it to heal it, right? If you just breathe it out, last three breaths here. If you're on your elbows, come up onto your hands. Take your left leg and step it back. If you tuck your toes in again and come to sitting on your heels. And again, we're just going to stay here for a couple of breaths. If you want to sit absolutely still, you can do that. Or if you want to just roll a little bit side to side, move your hips a little bit to give your bum a little massage with your heels. It's also cool. I'm going to be here for two more breaths. And then see if you come down to all fours. And then from all fours, we're going to lay down flat on our stomachs. You can use your left hand as a little pillow for your head. Or if you want to, you can use your pillow as a little pillow for your head. Then you're going to take your right foot and bend it in towards your body. You're going to grab hold of your right foot with your right hand. And we're just going to stay here for about 15 breaths. Breathe slow and deep. Give yourself this time to connect with these two big important energies or these two important organs in your body your stomach and your spleen and these two big functions that i've described today so the ability to feel your emotions and to digest your emotional experiences and also not to take life so seriously I recently came across um, in human design, they talked about it's not just what we eat, it's also how we eat. And so contemplating if we're eating in the serious way or if we're eating really quickly and, you know, a part of the digestion starts in the mouth too, that we need to really chew our food until it's completely liquefied before we swallow, that will really help the stomach because the stomach can't deal with big chunks of food, right? So 
there's some people who find it better to eat during the day. Other people find it healthier to eat at night. Some people prefer to eat with other people. Some people prefer to eat alone in a dark room. Some people like to eat with music. Some people prefer to eat cold foods. Other people prefer to eat hot foods. And it's just about understanding ourselves and all of these ways of eating, I think, are also indicative of our ways of dealing with emotions. Some people are more morning people and some people are more night people, right? So all of these things, just learning to understand ourselves and our energy in motion. And see as you slowly release your right foot, let your right foot come down towards the floor. Maybe just move your hips a little bit side to side a few times. And then change your arms or just your pillow so that you can have your left arm free to find your left foot behind you. And let yourself rest down. This is not yang yoga, this is yin yoga, so we're not trying to hold too tight, we're trying, not trying at all. The only force in yin is gravity and then getting out of the way of gravity. I really like this saying too that the ego is chronic muscular tension. And so if we're practicing yin, we're melting the ego by releasing this muscular tension. And they say in the spiritual world that there's two ways of dealing with the ego. The yang way is to go on this strong path of killing the ego. And the yin way is to love the ego. And I don't know how long you've been on this journey, but what I came to realize was that I have to have an ego to function in the world. And so I want to have an ego that functions <laughs> in the world in a harmonious way, both for me and for the people I come across. And the less tension I can have, the less issues I will have with myself and with other people so again just melting the tension melting the fuzz melting these emotional experiences by allowing the stomach time and healing to digest take time to feel to connect inward to connect with yourself We're going to stay here for five more breaths. You might be able to feel the energy channels now in the back of your legs starting to open. And this is really energy medicine, this work that we're doing here today. Slowly release your left foot. Maybe just move your hips again a few times side to side. And start to come up. And we're going to do a short little Shavasana again. So just lay down onto your back. Bring your legs to straight. Open your palms facing up and take five breaths. Just again connecting inward and feeling your emotions, accepting your emotions just as they are, just as you are. There's nothing wrong. Everything that you are is just right. And 
So if you bring your right knee into your chest, you can hug your knee into your chest. We're going to stay here for about 10 breaths. Relax everything. And I don't want you to try to push your knee into your chest at all. It's not the idea here. Rather, I would like you to relax your thigh muscles and your abdomen to see if your thigh can sink down more into your belly. Not by creating more tension, but by using all of your minds to relax your whole body. Get out of the way so that your leg can sink down into you. Last three breaths here, really slow, deep, big breath. See if you slowly release your right leg down. And then bring your left knee into your chest. Same thing here. Just let gravity do the work. So gravity will pull your leg down by itself. And then that space between gravity and your leg, that's the measure of your ego then, right? Like your chronic tension. See if you can be a little bit less chronic intentionally. Bring your attention to your tension. And use your minds to melt the fuzz, the sticky stuff. Slow deep breaths, slow, calm mind. going to stay here and just breathe it in breathe it out whatever's been going on for you today or this week and recognizing how much of the stuff isn't even yours in the first place so you can just breathe that out And let it go and relax more. Be that you that you really like. Be that you that you love. Love your ego. Melt your tension. We are on the last three breaths now. See if you relax slowly your left leg down towards the floor. Take another little moment just to feel. And then slowly bend your knees, roll over onto your right side. Take two breaths on your right side. And then slowly come all the way up. And we're going to do another position. So for this position, you might need both your blocks or both your pillows. You want to widen your legs as much as possible. So again, we're working on the stomach meridian that goes up towards the groin and into the stomach. Take as many pillows as you need so that because it's not yang yoga, it's yin yoga. You don't want to sit here and start sweating from 
tension, you want to be able to melt yourself down. I'm even going to use my hands into fists so I can rest my forehead and relax my neck, my tongue and my jaw. Breathe slow and deep. You feel the muscles in your back start to relax and shift and release, letting go of any places where you feel tension. And now we're working on the upper parts of these meridians that go up the back almost next to the spine. So you can imagine these meridians going up your legs and up your back. The stomach goes inside the leg and the spleen goes on the back of the legs. These are the meridians that we're opening today. And as your attention moves over these meridians, where your attention goes, the energy will flow. And that's just how this works. Make sure your tongue is relaxed. Make sure your jaw is relaxed. Relax more into this pose. Check if you can breathe even slower, even deeper. Relax as much as you can and then relax even more. We're not going anywhere. We're not trying to impress anybody with how this looks. This is not an Instagram yoga pose. This is a yin yoga pose, meaning that it's about the sensations that you feel connecting with the emotional parts of you. Breathe slow, deep breaths. We're going to stay here for about ten more breaths. Take your time to breathe all of it out. Whatever you've been carrying in your heavy backpack, all these responsibilities that have kept you from playing, and you forget to be not just a responsible adult, but also to be a carefree child. I think that's part of the journey is to take every part of you with you so that you don't just grow out of it, but you grow up and you keep building yourself, bringing your younger selves with you and continue the healing, not just for the person you are now, but throughout, I want to say your lifetimes, whether you believe in past lives or not, but Many of us have had many lifetimes just in this life. So, and you know that every seven years, your whole body has changed every cell. So there isn't anything that connects you to the baby that you were anymore. If you're talking about the material, but when you're talking about the emotional, then yes, so much. Maybe we can just send a few loving thoughts to our own inner children and into our own past as we relax even more in our backs. Last two breaths here. Slowly, very gently, ease yourself off your blocks, sorry, your bolsters, and then push them over to the side. 
and then we're gonna come onto our hands and our knees again and we're gonna do a wide-legged child's pose so again if you need support underneath your knees maybe you take your pillow and just put them under your knees so that your knees get to be nice and soft and relaxed widen your knees a lot and then see if you can bring your chest and your torso down to the floor. We're gonna stay here for about 15 breaths. Again, we're working on these meridians that go on the insides of the thighs and then up your back. So bring your attention where your attention goes, energy will flow. And we're all about opening up to more flow of our life force energies. You know, sometimes in life we feel blocked or we feel resistance. And sometimes resistance is good, you know. Sometimes inner resistance is sort of like your higher self saying, yes, yes, but not now, you know, not yet. But if we feel blocked, and we try to solve that block through our minds, we can get really tight run around in circles in our own head so sometimes the best way to come out of a block is to do practices like this where we go deep inside and we release it in the body and when the energies of the body flows then we can flow with the energies of life so just notice where you find any points of tension and then bring your attention to your tension and then watch it start to shift and change and flow. You're gonna stay here for the last five breaths and if you can, see if you let go even more. Almost like you're giving your heart to the earth. Two more breaths. And then slowly start to come up. And then again. <laughs> For the last time, see if you lay yourself down in Shavasana. Let yourself find rest. And now if you want to, because you're going to be here for about five minutes, if you want to support yourself in any way to get extra comfortable, you have your pillows. Get your blanket if you want. And then allow yourself to rest down. As you lay down here, I would like to share a poem. So start to relax your face, your tongue, your jaw, relax your neck, relax your back, relax your arms and your legs, relax your belly, your abdomen and your stomach. Feel how your body is energy that moves around. Connect with this energy that is yours. Feel your feelings and accept every part of yourself. Love yourself just like the earth does. And the earth is always providing for all of your needs so see if you can also along with this love find gratitude and appreciation and trust trust that tomorrow will be even better than today and that whatever challenges come up along your way you have just what you need to handle them so the poem i'm going to read to you is called wild geese and this is by Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk 
on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. And meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. So I hope you don't mind, but for me, when poems are really good, I like to read them two times. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. So tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. And meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscape over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh, and exciting over and over announcing your place in the family of things feel your body feel your breath feel the energy of your three minds your brain your heart in your stomach. And before you do anything else, I just want to invite you to take a moment to create an intention for the next time you're going to play to allow yourself to heal your spleen. And then slowly when you're ready, if you want to, you can start to move. If you are lying here right now and you just want to stay even oh my gosh stay <laughs> you don't have to do anything but if you want to you can start little movements from your fingers and your toes your hands and then your feet slowly start to bend your knees put your feet flat on the floor maybe Move your knees a few times side to side. If you want to hug yourself in, you can do that. If you want to stretch yourself out, you can do that. Just listen to your body. And slowly take your time. Make your way over to your right side again. And then from your right side, push into the floor with your left hand. And come up into a seated position. And from the seated position, see if you just take that earth energy with your hands and send it up into heaven. And then receive that heavenly energy and bring it down into your mind. 
into your stomach, into your heart. Bring your palms facing each other in front of your heart. Raise your heart for the occasion and then bow your head to the wisdom of your heart. We'll end our class with a nice OM. If you want to, do it with me. If you don't want to, just listen to me for a moment. Take a big inhale. Exhale slowly. Inhale for your OM. So I would like to thank you so much for taking the time to practice yin yoga with me today. I hope that this class has left you feeling really good. Um, I'm going to continue this series. There's five elements in the Chinese medicine. So I hope you will continue the journey with me for the next one. Peace to you. Namaste. Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, peace, peace, peace.